Chris, uh, how many rides have you done now? Uh, we did the, the two that you saw, and then the two that you saw, and then we did a, we've done a lot of regional rides and stuff like that. Went over to England. We did uh, the England ride and uh, been on a bunch of regional ones uh, from here down to DC and stuff. And every year I try and do a couple of events, but it's grown so much, you know. Grown so much, yeah. Wasn't your most recent one to England, right? Is yeah, that for me. Uh, and well, I do the one out here every year, but um, for me, the most recent one that I've done, like multi-day one, was uh, in England. We went over there for about two weeks. We brought 15 American soldiers over, and we rode with 15 uh, British guys through the English countryside, and it was great. Um, in the beginning of the ride, you could, you know, the American guys were over here, and the English guys were over here. <laughs> I guess like by night three, you couldn't tell who was. Couldn't there. tell who was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was sort of <laughs> who was doing Nick in the beginning? You were doing most of the filming, is that right? Uh, a bunch of it. The first year it was pretty much just me, and the second year we had uh, some other additional help. I do want to actually uh, just mention that uh, Joanne Lyles is here tonight, so I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I actually just realized that you're not in the credits for the thank yous, and uh, so I want to personally thank you. Uh, you know, we still we do the rides now in, in New York in honor of her son Jordan, and uh, I, it means a lot oh. to me to uh, have you here tonight and to allow us to honor your son by continuing these rides. So thank you, and everybody else that's here as well, of course. Wonderful to acknowledge that. You must. How does it? And Matt, tell us a little bit about your involvement and when you got involved with this whole project. Well, I got involved as a, as an editor, basically. Uh, Nick and I and Chris, we've we've known each other since we were kids. And did you all grow up out here then? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Chris and I went to high school together. We graduated together, and we know Nick make from it high school. He never made it. Yeah, <laughs> in East Hampton. <laughs> and um, you know, Nick came came uh, one day to me with a box full of tapes. Uh, Hundreds of hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of, tapes. of tapes, and was like, you know, maybe one day we can do something with this, and uh, that one day turned into, um, it was the tenth anniversary of Chris's original ride coming up, which was this past summer, and we thought that that would be a great goal to try and get the film done by that point, so we started about two years ago in the edit room, uh, re-interviewing all the principal characters who were on that ride. Uh, Heath and Ryan, uh, Melissa Stockwell. Um, was it hard to find them after oh, no, those years? Not really. I no? mean, Nick uh, keeps up with uh, most of the people from Soldier Ride. Um, actually, he's great Melissa, who just saw, she actually just had a baby last week. So. Oh, right. We're, we're in touch Congratulations. With a lot of people, so. Just last week. Just last week. Oh, baby boy. Thanksgiving. Wow. Wow. So you've been involved for the last couple of years and in helping really pull the film itself together, right? Yeah, I have a, a local uh, production company that I run in Hamptons, and yeah, it was sort it's of... Color Bar. Called Pretty. Color Bar, yeah. And um, so that was my end. You know, I, I got to know some of the guys. I, Nick was uh, nice enough to take me to the UK on the first Soldier Ride UK, and I did a short piece about that and about the goodwill that Wounded Warrior Project does. And everybody got to know me a little bit and got to trust me a little bit and allowed me to interview them. Now, were you on the bikes while you were filming? I assume you had to be as well? Uh, honestly, I, when I turned 40, which was about three years ago, I realized I had not been on a bike since high school either. Uh, and so when I say we went across the country, Chris did, and I was in a car. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the okay. <laughs> Still a very vague we, uh, and uh, but I, but I do but I have been riding recently. In fact, the last time I spoke to you, Bonnie, was I was riding a bike uh, uh, from the West Side Highway from Midtown to that's uh, right, to right. And uh, thank you for having us on the air. But I, <laughs> that was a little sketchy. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. You were in the middle of the ride. Oh my yes, god. Yes, and yeah. actually, the bike that I had that had my name on it from the last ride had been used by somebody else that didn't have a right arm, and usually the brake is your your back brake is your right hand. And when I started riding, I realized that they would switched it, so all the brakes were on the left. And so I, when I first, I was on the phone with you live on the radio, and I went to go stop, and I <laughs> ran stop. into the back of the truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being interviewed on the radio can be dangerous. You know, you just got to watch that. Yeah, right, right. Do you, how does it feel watching this from all of your perspectives? To, to me, it's a gift because uh, I, you know, um, some of the footage I had never seen or barely remember uh, before. I didn't know it was taken. Uh, Has some been recently added, by the way, of the footage? Uh, some of the footage from, from the more recent soldier rides that either Nick or I have filmed in the last three or four years is some of the stuff you see at the end. Um, but the first, uh, what, 
70 minutes of the film is basically uh, the one cross-country journey that Chris the first, took. The first year I went across, Nick would uh, leapfrog out ahead of us or, or meet us at certain places and like film us going by or you know, uh, be behind in, in the car filming. And then the second year we realized with all the soldiers that we had something special. And we got a film student from NYU who did most of the trip with us and kind of documented a lot of the stuff that you see on the sides, um, which was great. But that's where it sat in a, a closet for nine years until you know Matt dragged it out and, and put it together for us. So for me, uh, to see it all again the first time they did it was, I mean, I, know the, I knew that they were making the movie, but I had no idea the quality of the work that he was getting done. And uh, it was amazing for me to be able to see all that stuff again. So it was really neat. And then he, they got us all together again, too, because they flew Heath and Ryan out, and we got to, I got to hang out with them for a weekend. We've seen each other periodically from time to time where I get to see Heath at a ceremony or Ryan at a ceremony, but all three of us hadn't been together until this summer. So, or actually, uh, when they, he was finishing up with the movie. What did they think of this? What do they think of this film? Uh, you know, you're always when you do something, you have to look about whether you're doing this, what you're doing it for. And mm -hmm. uh, the main thing for us was obviously to, well, to tell the story as honestly as we could. But I was definitely very nervous. Uh, Chris is bigger than me, but I was more nervous about Heath and Ryan because it's, it really tells a lot about you know their personal life and their story. So I was very they they really they were very happy with it. They are very happy with it. So that. That made my day. So. Yeah. What have you heard from other wounded warriors who've seen this? The, the one response, because now we've taken this, uh, we've taken it on the soldier ride with us as we go on the different soldier rides. So this fall alone, we've been to Virginia, Phoenix, San Antonio, uh, UK. We were in London, showed that sort of twice there. And the, the interesting thing, and when we had heard about this story about the warrior you meet at the end, Eric, uh, talking about how he wanted to go and, and do this ride, I thought it'd be really nice because the whole story does kind of move forward 10 years and how now there's a younger generation going through a similar thing and being inspired by this. So that's why we put that last scene in. Uh, but what I didn't expect was that every time we show it, wounded warriors come out of there and immediately come up to me. And, and I've been working like the last 10 years on different rides, but a lot of times warriors don't know what my part of this was because I don't go around saying, ooh. So a lot of times they think I'm just a photographer, which is fine. Uh, but now that they see me in this, they come up and they say, oh my God, loved it. We're, we're, where do we sign up to do this again? And so now, actually, there's, there's another group of warriors that are going to do their own cross-country uh, in 2015, and a lot of other warriors that are expressing the same thing. It was not oh. what I was expecting to happen. But. No? What were you expecting from this? I don't know. The ride across <laughs> wants to be done. And that was it, right? <laughs> uh, no, it's, you know, to watch it grow, it, it grew because out of necessity. Um, and you know, like as you can see, we we really we winged it. You know, as things came up, as problems arose, we kind of dealt with them on the fly. And that's sort of the way the Wounded Warrior Project as a whole grew. You know, it started off with John uh, delivering the backpacks, and then all of a sudden we realized family members had to pay to steer ne stay near the hospital. Let's address that, and then let's address the, you know education while they're recovering to their next job or career. And it sort of just kept morphing over the ten years, and that's how it's got to be so big. Um, Taken on a life of its own yeah, in a way? Yeah, out of necessity and out of the American public. And one of the reasons why I'm so grateful is because uh, East Hampton, if, if we didn't make that initial, raise that much money by that certain date, it would have never happened. So it was the, you know, the East Hampton community that got behind us uh, early on. I had a friend who did the website for us for free and uh, another person donated you know, uh, his time here. Kurt from Cyclepath uh, got me the bike sponsored and, and, and that just kept kind of snowballing as we went across the country and we found that there was no shortage of people willing to help. Who wrote the $25,000 check? That's in the film. Yeah, that's... Uh, Is that I anonymous? Guy, <laughs> I, 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 I don't really know, actually. Um, you don't he, really? Peter knows. Peter knows the guy's name because he opened it up like that. I just remember calling him and asking him permission to get a set of bike tires, and I was like, I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> After that, but yeah. Can we speak to the role that Peter Hunterkamp plays, has played in all of this? Uh, he's behind the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Wizard. Well, Peter, Peter, if, uh, you know, he's the one who made it go from idea to happening. Um, he really and, did, right? Yeah, he was he the force. Because you know, I, I, I mentioned it to him uh, the following day after coming up with the idea late at night. And you know, he says famous, he teases me because about an hour after I told him, I said, you know, he started saying, well, this can work, this can work. And I was like, wait, wait a second. And then he looked at me <laughs> and he goes, look, if you don't do it, would you be upset if I found someone who would? <laughs> and I was like, oh. Okay, so, uh, as a challenge. He gave me 24 <laughs> hours to think about it, you know, and then I told my girlfriend at the time, it was my wife now, Lisa, I think I'm riding across the country. And 
Did she ride with you? Did I she see her? She flew out and met me at different points and rode. You know, Which is what here a lot there. of people did here and there, right? Yeah. Yay, Lisa. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing. And then, you know, um, I, I don't know if uh, Harvey Nerano, the, um, the guy uh, in the movie there who's the occupational therapist at Walter Reed, he's as m much a success to this, part of the success of the Wounded Warrior Project as anybody. The, the trauma that he's seen uh, in 12, 10 years, I can only imagine, 12 years, mm. uh, and he's still there doing it, day in, day out. And he knows these guys by name. And he, you know, when guys go out on a trip, he says, you got to watch him. He's got an anger issue. You got to watch him. He uh, thinks he's further along than he is. You got to watch him. And he comes out on the rides. And every time I go on a ride, I don't go as often as Nick, but every time I go about once a year, I'm looking forward to see, you know, someone that I recognize from the, the rides before. And uh, they're not there. And it's kind of like, it's one of those bittersweet things where you realize they've gone on. They've got a job, they've, they're married, they have kids, they've moved on, they're, they're doing their thing. And this is a whole new crop of guys. So it's tough that you see a whole new you know, fleet of younger faces, but um, you know, it's amazing that, that Harvey's still there plugging away. And he's still at Walter Reed, still doing his thing. Mm. What about that first time that you were allowed in to Walter Reed Hospital? It's amazing. I mean, uh, as Nick said, it's definitely one of the more important part of your uh, your uh, life. Uh, as soon as the elevator doors open, your heart drops into your stomach and you know just changes you. Mm. It galvanized us, though. I think which was the most important. Yeah, it made us realize that we, like Chris said, we you know that we had no choice. We're going to do this. The one thing that surprised me about Walter Reed the first time, and and again, this I guess sort of the story with the whole entire film was that. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of hours of great stories and things, but it's just trying to fit it together properly, and I've got to give Matt a lot of credit for making that happen. Mm. But, uh, but even just on that subject of that first day, uh, I mean, I said in the film it changed my life, and it did. And I, I, I had plans for afterwards to meet with some, some girls, actually, in uh, Washington, D.C. And I, you know, I actually went, but, uh, but it was just a mess. I mean, couldn't, you know, couldn't turn off what I'd just gone through and seen. And also the thing that really surprised me was how upbeat everybody was there. Uh, yeah, what you saw in the movie, the, the attitude of these uh, men and women, it wasn't just them. I mean, that was like a And it wasn't just thing. a camera. Yeah, that's the way they were. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't like it's changed when the camera went off. And that's the way they were throughout the ride. And that's what made it so powerful and so addicting and so, you know, perpetuated it so much. Was wow. That. Talk about a reality, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Exactly. And that's why, you know, I mean, for me it was... It's kind of hard to complain about your legs hurting when you're riding with someone who doesn't have any, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and as they say, it all, it all gets put into perspective. I've listened to, I've ridden behind guys and list, watched a guy with a, who's missing a leg um, talk with a guy who's missing an arm about who's got it worse, you know, saying that the other guy had it worse. I've watched a guy with no legs call a guy who's missing a leg below the knee just inconvenienced. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's, it's amazing what you see, and, and every time you think you've seen it all, you see something else. Speaking of seeing things, Matt, did you know right away that there was so much here? Um, it, it, were you at all, what was the most challenging part? Were you at all intimidated by all of this footage? Well, the, the interesting thing was, and I think I've told you guys this before, I, Nick literally gave me a box full of hundreds <laughs> of tapes, and I pulled about five out randomly to do a, a, a teaser that we thought we could use for fundraising. And the first tape I saw was Heat's Accident. So I, it sort of, you know, in my mind, that was so amazing that they caught that on tape or the aftermath of it on tape. So I was intrigued to see what else was on the tape. You know, of course, it was days and days of nothing. <laughs> you know, of, <laughs> of just the guys riding and nothing happened. And I just got lucky that that first tape was that exciting. Did it all then come together, or did you all see a through line well, as you were watching? It, it would have helped Matt if I had logged any of the tapes. Or you didn't them. log any? Or labeled them. Even. Or labeled They weren't them. even put in order. They were like oh, just random. Nice. Here's to you, Matt. Matthew, yeah. <laughs> we're not, they're I, not I worthy. I never saw it in, in any way in its development. I knew they were doing something, and then um, I got to see the finished product kind of like everyone else did uh, a couple of days before they, they screened it publicly. So for me, it was I was blown away. Because you're the star, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> One of them, right? Yeah, right, yeah. along with Heath and Ryan. Do, do you look back on this, Chris, and think... In a way, it's bittersweet because it was the early, the very first time that it was done that you did it, and you long for that 
at all? Uh, yeah, in Ryan a way? summed it up really well. I thought it was great when you said you, you knew that this series of events of I've never done this before, my life is coming to an end type of deal. But um, no, you know, it was, I'm just blessed to be, have been a part of it. I, I mean, it changed my life forever. And, uh, and to see where it's gone now, you know, I turn on the TV and I see a commercial for Wounded Warrior Project. And it's, just, it's crazy. It's hard to believe. Is it, is it okay that, in a way, Soldier Ride is becoming synonymous almost with Wounded Warrior? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, they, um, they absorbed Soldier Ride uh, a couple years after the first ride. Um, and Soldier Ride became, instead of being a fundraiser for the Wounded Warrior Project, became a program uh, uh, that the Wounded Warrior Project offers. And the, as you saw in the second ride, we realized that, um, you know, we morphed from being a fundraiser to a rehabilitative event. Mm. And um, shortly after that, they kind of, and you know, now they have all professionals running everything, you know, guys who are prosthetic professionals are fitting the guys on the bikes instead of me. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they have uh, hundreds of staff members, so. So, it, it just about, we're just about ready, but can, can we grab just a couple of questions, potentially? Anyone have questions for our filmmakers and Chris Carney? Anyone, I, oh, go ahead, sir. Uh, can you talk about the involvement of Vietnam vets uh, with this, uh yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Um, it was, uh, I think, some of the early success of the Wounded Warrior Project was um, due to the realization of how horribly the country treated the Vietnam vets and were sort of not willing to have that happen again. And I think people were able to separate a you know, controversial war from the warrior like they did uh, a generation before. I think that's um, one of the direct uh, results why Wounded Warrior Project grew so fast initially because everyone realized how poorly the Wounded uh, the Vietnam veterans were, were treated. Um, you know, and we would see them showing up at, at, at a lot of events and, and stuff and, and talking with the guys. And as a civilian, I don't know what guys have been through, but it's amazing when you see two people who you think have nothing in common and instantly there. Ah. Yeah, we actually have a, a Vietnam vet, he's a Purple Heart veteran, Ed German, who's our uh, nighttime jazz host and, and Friday Night Soul. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud of him. And it took, it took until after 9-11 that he actually put his dress blues on. It was the first time since he had returned. Uh, he had never worn them because of how he was treated. And he was told not to even, by his girlfriend, not to even let people know that he had been to Vietnam. So okay. yeah, yeah. So do you feel in a sense, you, what have you accomplished with this? Do you feel a sense of accomplishment? Well, I, I mean, I think that with going on a soldier ride and having people talk about it or stuff that Wounded Warrior Project does and, and not having any idea who we are is a real testament to how successful it's become. And there's no bigger honor than having something that's a good thing become bigger than yourself. So, I mean, at least for me. Well put, yeah. Well put, yeah. How has it changed your life? Um, just to go on a soldier ride and, and meet these men and women is just amazing. And, and I recommend it to anybody who has the chance to do it. It's an incredible experience. Uh, you, it's a couple of days or maybe even an afternoon that will stay with you forever. Mm. Can you ride on a cruiser bike? A cruiser, <laughs> sure. With a, with a basket? I yeah, mean, would that not? work? Yeah. <laughs> they, they ride at a pretty casual That's what I pace. Got, right. <laughs> Unbelievable, unbelievable. Where is this going from here after the Hamptons take two? Um, Miami in, uh, is the next public screening that we're doing. We have a few private screenings. Tomorrow at West Point there's a private screening. Oh, wow. Uh, which we're very excited about. Yeah, actually tomorrow, and of course, unfortunately, <laughs> neither of us can be there, but uh, you're going, Chris, right? Uh, tomorrow is they're honoring uh, uh, the surviving members uh, from the Battle of Bastion, I believe, uh, at West Point. The, the battling bastards of Bastion are being honored at uh, West Point uh, tomorrow. So wow. there's not too many of those guys left. So it's, it's oh not yes, yeah. that's fabulous. Would you ever think of also teaming with Honor Flight? You know where they fly World War II veterans yeah, down I mean, to, to be in the it, presence of the World War II veterans is just amazing, and uh, they're such a resource to this country that anything to do with them is How about other film festivals? Plans? Uh, we, we actually have a whole plan for the new year. There's some changes that are being made to the film, uh, and that's gonna be released in January sometime. And it's touring with the Wounded Warrior Project all over the country, wow. and we hope to get it in some other festivals. Awesome. Well, right, congratulations. What great work. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you.